together and create tomorrow that is changing. Creating a sustainable tomorrow of Jeju. Global partner, JDC. Coming up on Arirang News. The countdown to the decision on which city will host the World Expo 2030 has begun as it'll be made in the coming hours. We go live to watch Busan's final presentation ahead of the voting. North Korean soldiers at the Joint Security Area at the Demilitarized Zone have been reportedly carrying pistols while on duty. Multiple sources say this has been since late last week following the regime's suspension of the 2018 military agreement. The humanitarian pause between Israel and Hamas enters its fifth day as the truce in Gaza has been extended by two more days. Hamas is reportedly to free 10 additional hostages each day. Good evening, it's 9 p.m. here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us on Arirang News. So, will it be Busan, Riyadh, or Rome? The host of the World Expo 2030 will be announced in just a couple of hours. Over in Paris tonight, contenders are making their final pitches with their fifth and final presentations ahead of the voting. Also, Team Korea is making a last-minute push to bring the mega event to Busan. Our uni leads us off. A delegation led by South Korean Prime Minister Han dok su comprised of business leaders, was making a last-minute pitch in Paris on Tuesday to members of the Bureau International Day Expositions before voting takes place on the host for the 2030 World Expo. In the final presentation, internationally renowned figures will convey our desire to attract and host the event and Busan's appeal and the proposed support strategies for participating countries. We will do our best to successfully conclude this long journey, which we came alongside our citizens, ensuring that the sincerity of South Korea can be fully expressed. While the detailed content of each country's presentation is strictly confidential, prominent figures expected to take part in the final presentation for Busan include former UN Secretary General Pang Ki-moon and Prime Minister Han. According to officials, Busan is differentiating itself from Riyadh's oil money by highlighting the country's vision to transform the World Expo into a platform seeking solutions to challenges faced by humanity. It may be a two-way race despite Italy's Rome being one of the candidate cities, as Italian media outlet La Repubblica reported that the Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni will not take part in the General Assembly in the French capital. International media outlets are paying attention to whether Busan can win the bid overtaking Riyadh. One French media outlet, Le Figaro, stated the competition seemed decided two months ago in favor of Saudi Arabia, but the Korean campaign to promote the country's second city was well carried out. Also mentioning the 150 taxis marked Busan 2030 circulating in Paris as one of the only indicators of the international competition underway in Paris. The South Korean government is hoping that if Riyadh does not win outright receiving two-thirds of the votes in the first round, Busan could potentially take a large chunk of the Rome votes to win the bid. Ahead of the secret vote in the following order, the Republic of Korea's Busan, Italy's Rome, and Saudi Arabia's Riyadh will give their final presentations on their expo projects for about 20 minutes each. A candidate must get two-thirds of the votes cast to be selected outright. If no candidate achieves this target, there will be a second round of voting after the third-place candidate is eliminated and the winner of a simple majority will be selected. The results will be announced around midnight and 1 a.m. Wednesday, Korea Standard Time, through the BIE's official account on X, formerly known as Twitter. Lee eun Arirang News. One Team Korea will sprint to the finish line. President Yoon sung yeol as he presided over a cabinet meeting earlier today, says the efforts will never stop until the very last whistle past midnight tonight. Our Kim do explains. With the Busan Expo campaign coming to an end, President Yoon sung yeol looked back over the last 16 months, saying united efforts don't stop until the very end. One Team Korea is on the last day of the 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 day. 
This as he presided over a cabinet meeting on Tuesday, the first one since he got back from nearly two weeks of overseas trips. He added, the strong efforts come as hosting the World Expo 2030 in Busan will lead to rapid, regionally balanced growth. And as the United team traveled around enough to circle the Earth 495 times together and met with representatives from more than 170 countries, President Yoon said South Korea made more friends, with many touting how united the support was for Busan. In addition, one team Korea utilized the occasion of meeting with representatives from other countries to develop bilateral ties with them. And in the United efforts, President Yoon Sung-yeol has done his part through summit diplomacy to urge leaders around the world to back Busan while making sure the campaign gets support. In fact, just 20 days after his inauguration, he kicked off a commission for this campaign, assigning Prime Minister Han Duk Su and Korea Chamber of Commerce and Industry Chair Che Tae-won, who also is SK Chairman, as co-leaders of the committee. So far, he's been to Paris twice during BIE General Assemblies, giving the presentation himself during his first trip. At the cabinet meeting, he also spoke of his overseas trips to APEC and the UK. He emphasized APEC's importance as South Korea relies on trade for its economy while highlighting his meeting with Apple CEO Tim Cook and co-hosting an event with his Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida at Stanford University. In terms of his visit to the UK, he underscored the significance of the new bilateral era, saying the global strategic partnership opened doors for many industries to cooperate. Kim do Arirang News. And with just a few hours to go until the host city of the 2030 World Expo is decided, excitement is reaching a fever pitch in Busan, one of the three candidates. For more, our reporter Song Yujin joins us live from Busan. Yujin. <laughs> Well, hello, Jiang. I'm currently inside the Grand Theater of the Busan Citizens Hall. This is where more than a thousand people have gathered to watch the highly anticipated BIE's General Assembly live. Now, the clock's ticking very late in the evening. It's already past nine here in Korea, but it's doing no harm to the levels of excitement and enthusiasm of the people, especially as the voting time is drawing closer. So, as you can hear and hear and see, people here are cheering. Of Busan's bid. Now, this event was organized by the Busan city government and it started about a half an hour ago. We just listened to the opening remarks of Busan Mayor Park Hyung-jun, who is currently in Paris. And now we're waiting for the fifth and final presentations of the three Canada cities that's expected to start within an hour. Now, following the presentations, this theater will connect live to civic groups in Paris that have been promoting Busan's candidacy across the city, which will give us a taste of the atmosphere in the French capital. But let's first listen to how excited the crowd here is. Today is the final day. The whole city won't be decided until after midnight, but until then I'll be eagerly awaiting the outcome, hoping that Busan wins. So Eugen, you've been there in Busan for a couple of days now. How has the atmosphere been there? Well, Jiyoung, just like how joyful this song is, I can say that Busan is currently in full expo spirit. Just like when the BIE's Encore Mission visited the city for an on-site inspection in April. Now, we've been seeing mass cheering sessions taking place across the city since last week. And yesterday, our team visited Heunde Beach, one of the most popular tourist spots in the city. And there, there was a giant mock-up of the 1889 World Expo's main attraction, the Eiffel Tower, alongside Bugi, which is a mascot of the 2030 World Expo Busan. And in the center was a large panel adorned with messages of hope and support for Busan. And while I was there at Heunde Beach, I spoke to some people there, and despite Riyadh being widely seen as 
a front runner, there's hope in Busan that it can change the game today. So let's first take a listen to. Just like in sports, the beauty lies in dramatic last-minute combats. I'm confident Busan will win, and this expo is not only a celebration for our city, but for all of Korea. I hope the BIE members vote for Busan. Busan is my hometown, and witnessing its transformation over the years has filled me with pride. Hosting the 2030 Expo would be amazing, and I wholeheartedly support Busan's bid. So let's see whether there'll be big smiles on the faces of those who are here to cheer for Busan's bid. I'll also be here until the very end with my fingers also firmly crossed, because Busan is indeed ready. Back to you, Chiyo. Thank you, Eugene. I have my fingers crossed, too. That was our Song Eugene live from Busan. North Korea is apparently arming its soldiers in the joint security area as it continues to raise tensions more heavily since last week. Today, a stern warning came from South Korea's defense chief. Our North Korean affairs correspondent Kim Jong-shi reports. Pyongyang is reportedly arming its soldiers who are deployed at Panmunjom joint security area. Yonhap News reported on Tuesday citing multiple South Korean and American military sources that since the latter half of last week, North Korean soldiers have been carrying sidearms while on duty. South Korean soldiers in the area remain unarmed. The United Nations Command, which is in charge of the Joint Security Area, is reportedly weighing options while closely monitoring Pyongyang's moves. Defense Minister Shin won strongly condemned the North on Tuesday afternoon, saying any careless maneuver that undermines peace is the beginning of ruin. According to the Ministry of National Defense, Shin ordered the military to retaliate decisively if the enemy makes any provocative moves. The JSA is where the historic Panmunjom declaration between then South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was unveiled in 2018. To fully implement the declaration, the two sides later reached an inter-Korean military agreement the same year to reduce tension on both sides of the military demarcation line as well as in the joint security area. Since the agreement, soldiers of both sides in Panmunjom went unarmed while on duty. If the North persists in arming its troops in the JSA, it's possible that South Korean soldiers will be ordered to carry firearms. Our military will continue to closely monitor North Korean moves and take necessary countermeasures. Pyongyang's decision to arm its soldiers at the JSA came after it began rebuilding guard posts along the inter-Korean border starting late last week and reportedly arming them with heavier weapons. The regime has been actively ramping up its military options after it virtually terminated the inter-Korean military agreement following the South Korean government's decision to partially suspend a clause relating to aerial reconnaissance due to North Korea's launch of a spy satellite. Kim Jong-sil, Arirang News. Pyongyang claims its military spy satellite launched last week took photos of the White House and the Pentagon. The UN Security Council was convened to discuss the launch, which violates its resolutions, but the council failed to produce any concrete action. Our Yoon Jin has more. North Korea's state-run media reported on Tuesday that leader Kim Jong-un received photographs from the National Aerospace Technology Administration on Monday and Tuesday. The pictures taken by the regime's Maligyong-1 military reconnaissance satellite included images of the Norfolk Naval Base, Newport News Shipyard and an airfield, all in the U.S. state of Virginia, as well as images of major military bases in South Korea and the U.S., none of which have been made public yet. On Monday, the 15-member U.N. Security Council met to discuss the November 21st spy satellite launch, during which the Assistant Secretary General for the Middle East, Asia and the Pacific called the North's launch a serious threat to aviation and maritime traffic. South Korea, present as an interested party, the U.S. and others condemned the launch as a violation of U.N. Security Council resolutions, which banned the regime from any launch using ballistic missile technology. However, the session failed to produce any joint statement due to opposition from China and Russia. At the end of the session, the United Nations ambassadors of the United States and North Korea became embroiled in a spat at the table, showing a rare, direct and public exchange between the adversaries. 
The DPRK claims it's uh, acting in self-defense, but the self-defense uh, really does not stand here as the U.S. and ROK military exercises, as you know, are routine and they're defensive in nature, unlike the DPRK's launches using ballistic missile technology, these actions are not prohibited by UN Security Council resolutions. One belligerent part of the United States is threatening us with a nuclear weapon. It is a legitimate right for the DPRK as another belligerent party to develop, test, manufacture, and possess weapon system equivalent to those that the United States have already possessed and are developing right now. South Korean ambassador to the UN, Hwang Jung-guk, said that Pyongyang is now almost mocking the Security Council. Lee Jin Arirang News. In the Middle East, the humanitarian pause between Israel and Hamas enters its fifth day as the truce in Gaza has been extended by two more days, allowing for more hostage prisoner exchanges. Choi Min-jung has the latest. The four-day humanitarian pause in Gaza, which was set to end on Tuesday, has been extended for another two days. Qatar's foreign ministry confirmed the agreement on Monday without giving too much detail. A senior Israeli advisor said Hamas will release 10 hostages each day under the terms of the agreement. The White House said it welcomed the extension. Now, in order to extend the pause, Hamas has committed to releasing another 20 women and children over the next two days. We would, of course, hope to see the pause extended further, and that will depend upon Hamas continuing to release hostages. U.S. President Joe Biden also released a statement stressing that related parties would take full advantage of the pause in fighting to increase the amount of humanitarian aid moving into Gaza. Biden also vowed to continue U.S. efforts to build a future of peace and dignity for the Palestinian people. U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres described the extension as hopeful, but warned that it still does not give enough time to meet humanitarian needs in Gaza. It's a glimpse of hope and humanity in the middle of the darkness of war, knowing that uh, uh, even with that additional amount of time, it will be impossible to satisfy all the dramatic needs of the population in Gaza. On the fourth day of the truce on Monday, the Israeli military confirmed the release of an additional 11 Israeli hostages. Qatar's foreign ministry said the hostages include three French citizens, two German citizens, and six Argentinian citizens. Over the first three days of the truce, Hamas released more than 50 hostages, mostly women and children. Israel freed over 100 Palestinians from prison. Choi min Arirang News. Moving on, South Korea and Indonesia have decided to enhance their cooperation on critical raw material supplies, including nickel. The Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy announced that the two countries held the 14th Korea-Indonesia Energy Forum in Jakarta on Tuesday for cooperation on the supply chain for key minerals and other raw materials. Discussed were establishing hydrogen production facilities and cooperation on nuclear power, including small modular react reactors. Seoul aims to open the door for domestic firms to export hydrogen-powered vehicles and facilities to Indonesia by building related infrastructure there. Meanwhile, the two countries are set to launch a joint mineral research center on Wednesday in Indonesia for high-purity nickel production for secondary batteries. As Korean webtoons, dramas and movies gain more popularity around the world, the content industry seeks to expand further by bringing in business opportunities and more talent through a special event. Our An Song Jin takes us to Content Business Week. Itaewon in class, All of Us Are Dead, The Uncanny Counter. All began life as webtoons before being successfully transformed into well-known K-dramas. As South Korea continues to make copyrighted works into different forms of visual entertainment, the country's exports of the content industry hit an all-time high of 12.4 billion U.S. dollars in 2021. 
Aligning with the government's effort to create economic value for the industry by increasing its exports, the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism, together with the Korea Creative Content Agency, organized the second annual Content Business Week to target both domestic and overseas markets. Content's Business Week is a chance for Korean firms creating and working with intellectual property to boost their business through B2B and B2C events. The three-day event that started on the 28th in Seoul links three different events, the Content IP Market, Licensing Con, and 2023 Webtoon Job Festa, each designed to expand intellectual property business among various manufacturing, communications, and services companies. We will develop our intellectual property talent so this market can grow not only in Korea, but also as a global content IP market, becoming a place where collaboration between various industries can be made. It will be a festival for people all over the world. The content IP market focuses on the interaction between content companies, service providers, and buyers to commercialize original intellectual property such as webtoons and various story characters. Well, it's not only about Korean webtoons, but for example about maybe Asian comics. So I really like the graphics and also storytelling. Well, it's not about every comic, so that's why I need to take a look by myself and like to choose the story and to choose the comics um, carefully so I can provide like the best for the readers. The Webtoon Job Festa connects recruiters and job seekers in the comics field to promote the growth and development of the industry. This event garnered attention from recruiters from nearly 80 companies. As K-content continues to gain popularity both at home and abroad, the government pledged to further discover and develop intellectual property content to create greater value for it. Han Songjin, Arirang News. With the arrival of the Arctic cold, cold wave warnings have just been issued in Gangwon-do and Gyeongsang-do provinces. Sub-zero cold temperatures are expected to continue for the time being. The day after tomorrow, temperatures in Seoul will plunge to minus 7 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, snowfall is in the forecast for inland regions. The capital region and the Chungcheong-do and Jeolla-do provinces can expect around 1 centimeter. Patches of ice may appear on the roads, making them slippery. Extra caution is necessary when driving. A strong wind warning has also been issued in Gangwon-do provinces. Please secure any items that could get blown away. Tomorrow, Seoul will start off at minus 4 degrees, Chuncheon minus 6 degrees Celsius. Daily highs in Seoul will get up to 2 degrees, Gwangju 9, Busan 10 degrees. This cold spell is expected to continue until late this week and then gradually ease from Sunday. That's all for Korea. Here are the weather conditions around the world. And now we bring you live our special coverage of the fifth and final presentation by South Korea's Busan, wishing to secure the World Expo 2030. Let's go live to our Yoon Jung-min at the News Center. Jung-min, I'll hand it over to you. Well, thank you, ji -young. It surely is a big event for millions around the world who are waiting for this news. Until this final moment, Team Korea has traveled around enough to circle the Earth 495 times and its efforts don't stop until past midnight tonight. And it's now time for Busan's final pitch, which, which we bring you live. Now, joining me in the studio is Mr. An Jun-sung, attorney at law. Thank you for your time. Thank you. 
Uh, Mr. An, so as we heard from the previous reports, three candidates, Bhutan, Riyadh, and Rome, will be making their final appeals for their World Expo bid at the Bureau International the Expositions. That's their one last chance. Mm -hmm. um, how significant is this fifth and final presentation? It's more like you're taking a final exam in school, <laughs> right? Very important, That's right? Very right? yeah. significant portion of the, your final grade, right? So I guess the two things to keep in mind. That first thing is that uh, you need to take should focus on the their their impact, mm. you know, message or sentence, and what they want to send the message. Very clear message and directly targeted, you know, the audience. I think. And second is that that you should come up with more specific gift package. You know, you know, mm -hmm. it's more like a, a quid pro quo situation. You know, in international politics, you, you, you know, basically they will ask you, the candidates, the candidates say, what can you do for us if we, if we for you, right? Basically, so it's basically this based, on, based on many bilateral relations. So you have to come up with some specific, you know, some ideas, more specific gift package. I think that's really most of the carrot, <laughs> more like sending some message, very, you know, good news to them. So they have to say, basically saying that we have to share our good news with you. I I would say a yeah. carrot is very important. And South Korea is promoting Busan as the right choice for the 2030 World Expo. What makes the city competitive compared to two contenders? Well, it's basically uh, the catchphrase, right? The mm. famous catchphrase is Busan is ready. Yes. I guess the two point about the readiness of Busan. Uh, as you know, that Busan is the you know the uh, sixth largest in industrial port in the world, and it become, has been the uh, has been the you know international hub for global supply chains, especially like you know Asia, you know Asia, Asia. Also, plus, and if Busan has been very popular venue for the many uh, you know international events such like Busan International Film Festival. So it's very popular site to visit also. And there's many things, you know, many you know, cultural event also, also many you know, activities there. So I think that's quite, you know, attraction point there. Also, uh, that's the things that kind of appealing to so what we have, and you know, try to focus and differentiate with other countries. For example, we see that, you know, the uh, like uh, Saudi Arabia is like in desert, desert, right? <laughs> so there's no water, right? Basically, it's the Busan is poor. Basically, we're saying that, and Rome doesn't have, you know. You know, doesn't have the the sea, so it's kind of some compared to the Bantu saying that we are different. You know, natural atmosphere, you know, nature also, and then maybe could oppose uh, some same special message from country bordering, you know, seas, you know, marine focus on marine industry. So I think that's kind of the, you know, compared to the Bantu, you know, not only the physical location and many cultural you know, issues, right? And Prof uh, Mr. An, what will be Busan's strategies? Oh, very interesting point, right? Uh, I look it up. I, I compare with the. I check the BI official website. They talk about their themes and sub themes, and I, I summarize as a three T's actually. The old country talking about T. Uh, for example, Korea is T is basically means a technology for humanity, right? The main point about the, the uh, Saudi Arabia is interesting. They're talking about the tomorrow. Well, it's not the you know better tomorrow. It's a Different tomorrow, so that I'm really happy about their many social issues, you know, human rights issues, a lot of you know, other issues. So they come up, they come up some. The theme is basically different tomorrow. What mean, basically means that they're sending message will be different after you know hosting their you know, you know BI expos. And also the interesting about the Italy, they come up with some tea, but also different tea. They're called togetherness. I think they're more like focused on the um, the current like metropolitan area, how they reuse it, and they're about the energy, you know, issues. I think they're approaching more general approach about the urban lifestyle and challenges. I think that's more like the way they're approaching it. So to three countries different way uh, about the um, but my con little bit uh, point about the technology for humanity because that I, I watch uh, three uh, promotional tape, you know, for three candidates. I just just before I got to the uh, studio, I wa I'm watching it and I see that. And other countries kind of focusing on actually technology side quite much. Like Saudi Arabia, they talk about a lot of you know the robot dancing <laughs> on the pavilion or something. But you know, I, when I watch the Korean side, I think that there was too much about the Korean content issues. You know, about the Korean drama. But you know, we know that many people, many you know international people, you know, foreigners like the Korean culture, K-pop culture is fine. But I think that we, this is not a cultural event. This is a business expo, right? I think that we need to come up with some specific reason why the business. Man, not the kid, you know, teenager kid in high school. It's more like a businessman. Why should I go, for, go I mean, fight, I mean, the, vote for the Busan instead of the Saudi Arabia or the Rome, right? So I think that's come up with some, the final presentation, maybe they should focus on the specific things that the provisions perspectives, I think that's emphasis mm. should be you know, mentioned. And uh, how do you feel about Busan's chances? 
Yeah, yeah tough question. <laughs> plus, <laughs> is the uh, secret ballot, right? Mm. So we do not know actually who. So some country will say, uh, well, we're going to vote for you, but we don't know what happened, right? The plus, uh, my concern is a little bit the uh, political issue. And you know, I, I, I Googled up some news about what happened in, you know, some international releases. It's very interesting about, you know, who's vo the, uh, how, how about the US position? You, mm. I mean, the Korean news media really don't talk, don't talk about it, but actually they vote in, endorse for the, uh, you know, Italy. And Japan originally endorsed for the Saudi, right? So that's things that really concern. We talk, we talk about the, with, you know, I think for the, uh, you know, the mission, they focus on the other mission, focus on the, you know, we, you know, we confirming, you know, we establish the, you know, allies, allies, alliance with, you know, you know, your traditional partners, right? U.S. and Japan, perhaps. But now, you know, we have come up with some challenge that we have to do ourselves, not. Help by the big brothers, right? Help by, by you know, have to be independent and ensuring that we are really very in the team, sovereign state. We're doing our job by ourselves. That's, I think, quite challenge for the, uh, you know, in the other mission. Then now I want to talk about um, Riyadh and Rome. What are appealing features of Riyadh and Rome? It's very interesting. I was thinking about it. What was the attraction point for the, the other countries compared, you know, competing? And then for Rome, I watched that video. It's very interesting. I see a lot of you know, you know, Greek painting, architecture. You know, so oh, it's nice. To play. I love to go somewhere. But the, is there, what's the business point about you know the Rome side? I think that's that uh, whether or not they're hosting the BIE Expo, maybe I might go even without the BIE expert because that, that's a great tour place. The problem downside for I think the loam is that that's the two kind of a too ancient in a way that is not really not reflecting you know current or future. Uh, but also the other side is that it's too much European. You know, mm -hmm. BIE is like a generous club, European part, you know, <laughs> club. So the other country, non-European country, wouldn't really appreciate it. The European control, you know, con countries, you know, you know, monopolizing or you know, you know then they're you know, hosting opportunities. So I think that might concern. And in Saudi Arabia, the problem with Saudi, I mean, good point. There's so much money, you know, <laughs> oil money. They, I, I, I find very interesting. They come up with some, uh, I think, the campaign they call one country, one pavilion. But I try to look it up. What does it really mean? It because I mean, they, even the Rome, the commercial, they say, oh, each country have their equal, you know, you know, size and equal location. Well, there's no equal location. But anyway, the, what happened was that I think that the way they're approaching it, Saudi, but not sure for a fact. But they might use their leverage to, you know. Uh, persuade some country to, if you, you know, vote for us and, and then we got selected for the coasting city for next, you know, BI Expo, we'll give you free pavilion, you mm -hmm. know. Because that if you see that the, this, 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 this 2031 is not from, different from Dejan Expo or the, you know, Yosu Expo, which was that the hosting country have to provide all the facilities, but this one is not the one provided by the hosting country. Each country's participant will pay for their own construction and destruction of all their facility they're using it. So there's a big you know, cost involved. So I guess there's some, some of developing country and you're concerned about the cost, maybe it could be the you know, big factor. Yeah. Um, and that was like appealing feature. And more specifically, what will be their strategy, Rome and Riyadh? We know it's a secret, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, well, I was saying that the way I, I look it up and the BIE at Expo is different from the Olympics and the you know, World Cup games, because they, although they're comparing the three mega event, but because that you appreciate the World Cup, well, not Olympic games, uh, it bes uh, I think beside the World War, two World War, you know, World Wars, I mean, other, t other times there was always the you know, Olympic games, but BI Expo was that there was a kind of a, um, you know, there was downtime <laughs> very often. So it's not really regular. And there was an amendment, because I think that's kind of a really traditional, it's a European, a club. So basically, and in the beginning, it's all European country doing all everything they wanted. But now the Asian country getting like Shanghai get it. I think first country was the uh, Japan, Osaka, get 1970. Take the first, not, I think it's a non-European country actually host that the BIE Expo. And but after that, there's there's some cost issue, just like some so Olympic games that we say some you know, Olympic game was not really good for economy because that there was so much investment. And it's, like, it's more like a sunk cost, right? You're not really getting bad. And how are you going to uh, visualize that facility that you have built it? Maybe forever you never use it for future. So it's kind of a cost, you know, cost benefit analysis coming in. Yeah, so that's the, what BI is, the, you know, their strategy to come up with ideas, right? 
Mr. Ahn, we were actually uh, waiting for the presentation to start in just a moment, but it seems like we have to wait a little bit longer. We will get back to you a little bit later, and uh, we will be back with our live coverage of the Busan's fifth and final presentation after the break at around 10.25 Korea time.